Hey everyone and welcome to another OpenRC2 update video. Version 0.4.23 has been released and it has been named Canned Salmon. Darling, you didn't use canned salmon, did you? Now there have been many improvement changes and fixes in this release, so in this video I will show you some of the most exciting ones. Alright, first off, the fallback sprites for uh, small and large 0 G rolls have been improved. Now you may be wondering uh, what's a fallback sprite? Basically, uh, some trains, like the modern twisted trains that you can build on LSM launch coaster, those trains were completely uh, made new for OpenRC2. So this, those have actually been uh, generated with uh, sprites for the zero G rolls. But all the trains, like the twisted trains, uh, they don't actually have sprites for these newer elements. Uh, basically, fallback sprites are just sprites from other elements like corkscrews or a gentle bank curve barrel rolls and um, yeah those are now being used in place of the newer sprites that are required and uh, yeah as you can see with these other sprites it's actually able to go through these elements fairly smoothly so uh, yeah for the small zero g rolls the sprites look good enough so that uh, with trains that have these uh, uh, sprites from the other groups available uh, you can now also build small zero G rolls on them. So the twisted train is one of them. Now for uh, large zero G rolls, uh, the fallback sprites have also been improved, uh, but for these elements, uh, it doesn't really look uh, completely right yet. So that's why you cannot build a large zero G roll on a twister coaster uh, without using cheats. But if you use the enable all drawable track pieces cheat, you can uh, now build these elements. And I think it actually looks pretty good. Okay, next up, um, the fallback sprites for dive loop track pieces have also been improved. And uh, as you can see, uh, they go through these elements uh, quite uh, smoothly. It's only when you uh, pause or slow it that you may see a little bit of uh, inconsistencies in some of the sprites. But uh, I think they uh, did a really good job uh, with the fallback sprites. Now, you cannot build dive loops uh, uh, without using uh, the enable all drawable track pieces cheat yet. Uh, but if you use cheats, uh, you can uh, build them on the on uh, coasters like Twister coasters. And I think uh, it actually looks pretty good. And just like on the Twister coaster that I just showed you, uh, you can also build the zero G roll on the limb launched roller coaster. If the um, train you use has fall break sprites or if it has uh, sprites for the zero G rolls. All right, the next change is that when vehicles use uh, fallback sprites, they are now less likely to glitch through the track. Now, as you can see here, um, if you look carefully, you can see a little box uh, around all these vehicles. Basically, that's their bounding box. And when it goes through a different element, like these curves or this inversion, the size of these bounding boxes uh, actually change. Now, when it used fallback sprites, it would actually use the bounding box that belonged to the other sprite. And that would lead to the vehicle uh, yeah, basically glitching through the track. So, for example, uh, if the track was uh, inverted, then for some of these fallback sprites, you could actually see them through the track here, uh, where they have to be behind the track. But now it has been changed, so that uh, the vehicles will always use the bounding box that belongs to the sprite that it would emulate. Basically, in human language, it means the train is less likely to glitch through the track when these fallback sprites are used. All right, for this next change, I want you to pay attention to the front of this train as it reverses this zero G roll element. Now, it was quite subtle, but you could see it move to the side a bit. It would, uh, look, it would look like it would wiggle a little bit. You can uh, see the same over here. Now, that has uh, actually been uh, changed, so it's uh, a bit smoother now. So it doesn't have the little wiggle when it comes out. Uh, the other trains uh, that uh, go through zero G rolls would do the same, but uh, that should no longer happen. And it looks uh, much nicer now. Okay, for the next change, I've opened the park, which has a huge amount of rides. And if we now go into the rides window, let me uh, make the interface a bit bigger. And here we can also find time since last inspection. And let's quickly sort. Oh, these are all rides uh, which are just made for decoration, which don't need inspections. But uh, if we scroll down a bit, um, well, then here we can find uh, all the rides that uh, 
do get regular inspections. Now, um, some of them are, uh, say, zero or one minute. Uh, those have just recently gotten an inspection. I could sort them again and they would show up at the bottom of the list here. Now, in this way, you could uh, also uh, find rides which have some issues. For example, here we have Ferry Go Round. It's been 64 minutes since it had its last inspection. So uh, maybe there's a mechanic who actually has some trouble finding the ride. Or maybe the uh, exit of the ride is not actually uh, connected properly. So hey, this uh, could be a way to uh, find some issues with your uh, layout in your park. Okay, a plugin API has been added to change a vehicle into a smoke plume. Uh, normally people would crash a ride and then uh, there would be some smoke particles that you can just move to anywhere in the park using a plugin like the Ride Vehicle Editor plugin. But uh, yeah, if you want moving smoke plumes, a vehicle can also uh, be turned into a smoke plume uh, by using a plugin. And then you can uh, make entries uh, like this, like this one from uh, Max Arceus, where he created this underwater whirlpool. These are all uh, moving vehicles that have been changed into smoke plumes. Okay, yeah, some changes have been made to the installer for the game. So uh, if you uh, download the game from the website and install it through the installer um, it will now detect your system language so it uh, should display um, the uh, installer in the language that your system uses now uh, when you install openrst2 you should not do that in the same folder as where your rollercoaster tycoon 2 installation is so the installer will now uh, prevent that from happening if it uh, detects that you're trying to install in the same folder now, something uh, which could happen when upgrading OpenRC2 to a newer version that sometimes uh, old versions of OpenRC2 official objects would not always uh, be removed. But that should now be fixed. So when you install a newer version, you should get the newest versions of any OpenRC2 official objects. If there, are, if, if there is a new version of the objects, of course. Okay, uh, when there's a new release version, you will see an orange banner around here, which uh, tells you a new update is available. Now, clicking it would uh, previously bring you to the OpenRC2 GitHub page. And uh, yeah, that's not an easy page for people to navigate if they don't know what they're looking for. So that has now been changed to make it a little bit more helpful. So instead, now it brings you to the download page where you can download the new release. Steam installations of RST Classic are now also automatically detected by OpenRST2. Some performance enhances were made, when, uh, which you will notice when moving the viewport in the game. Um, this is a huge park with a huge amount of guests, and when I move the camera now like this, it's actually buttery smooth, which is uh, really nice. Okay, uh, another performance enhancement was made, uh, which is related to uh, several of these uh, windows, for example, a footpath window or uh, even a viewport window. Uh, these windows would previously uh, redraw every frame, uh, even if nothing on them was changed. And that has now been uh, uh, improved. So they will only uh, redraw if something actually changes on them. And it goes for quite a lot of uh, windows. You can find the exact list uh, in the change log. Okay, for this next improvement, uh, I will enable Show FPS, which shows the frames per second in the top of the screen. Now, it's now set to the internal speed of the game, so that's 40 frames per second, so you see 40 here. But in OpenRC2, you can actually set the frame rate uh, higher. I'm just going to set it to unrestricted now, and you can see it uh, immediately jumps to a really high number. And when it uses this higher number, uh, the game can do tweening. Basically what that does is uh, it makes the animations uh, smoother. Now, um, another performance improvement has been made. So um, yeah, when you zoom out, these sprites get really uh, small. And then it no longer makes any sense to do uh, tweening for these sprites. So it wouldn't really uh, help anyway. So when you're zoomed out, uh, the game will no longer do tweening. And that should make... Uh, the game run a bit uh, smoother when you're zoomed out. Something which OpenRC2 has is an uh, internal uh, console. So you can uh, bring it up by uh, bringing up the debug menu and here you can see show console. 
If you don't see these cogwheel icons, you have to enable debugging functions in the options first. But uh, then you see the console. Now I already messed around with it a bit, so there's already some stuff shown here. But for example, you can uh, show a list of the stuff, or you can show a list of the rides. But you can also uh, do stuff here, like for example, you can give a ride a different operating mode while it's still running. So here you can see rides set, and then it uh, now actually shows you some options that you have. So a lot of these uh, of these functions that you can do through the console actually have had uh, any error messages that you would see uh, improved. So it's more descriptive and it's more user friendly uh, to uh, use any of these functions. Okay, this uh, next change is a bit more technical. Uh, basically, uh, most of the graphics for OpenRS2 are contained in one file, uh, G2. And um, with all the stuff that OpenRS2 has added over time, uh, it has just grown and grown. And now it has been decided to actually split it up into several files. So uh, the, any font data is now uh, split up into a different file. And all the track graphics, track pieces, I believe, are now also split off into a separate file. Now, several more fixes were done in this release. Now here you can see the virtual floor, and it uh, would sometimes draw a little bit buggy, but uh, that should now have been uh, fixed. Next, uh, some custom RST1 scenarios. They would actually show up under competitions. Uh, yeah, that's because they used the same file name as some of the maps that were used for for. Uh, competitions and now the game actually also does a name check just to make sure that it doesn't end up in the wrong category now rollercoaster tycoon 2 had official expansion packs but that was actually also a user created expansion pack and since uh, these scenarios get their own tab in the game when you uh, when you load them um, it has been decided that uh, these scenarios could also get any fixes if any were necessary now in one of the scenarios there's actually this haunted house and the exit and the entrance huts are actually uh, switched around so when you now load this scenario in open rc2 these two uh, should be uh, switched around to the correct position there was an issue with some animated objects which would show a random sprites at the end of their uh, animation but that should now have been uh, fixed there was an issue with bumper cars and flying saucer vehicles in that they could spawn on top of each other and get stuck but that should now no longer happen now these uh, newer large gently sloped turns uh, could be built for rides where the vehicles don't actually have sprites for them for example if you built a go-kart ride uh, and you use the rollercoaster tycoon one go-karts they don't actually have sprites for these turns so it would look a bit funky but uh, now you should no longer be able to build them if you don't have the correct vehicles selected. So uh, with the Rollercast Tycoon 2 cards, you should still be able to build these. But with the RST1 cards, you cannot. Now the statistics for a ride or a stall could actually overflow if they got to really high numbers. But that should now no longer happen. Okay, in OpenRS2 you can choose between opaque water, which you cannot see through, and transparent water. Now in Rollercoaster Tycoon 1, um, if the water was opaque, then you could not actually see the park fences through it. You can see uh, they were not drawn. But in OpenRST2, uh, the park fences were actually visible through the water if they sloped into them. But it has now been changed to uh, look like it did in Rollercoaster Tycoon 1. So. Uh, yeah, the park fences will no longer be drawn through the water if it's uh, set to be opaque. And finally, there was an issue when a maze design from Rollercoast Tycoon 1 that had wooden walls was imported into the game. It would not load correctly and would have all these glitchy sprites. Uh, but that should no longer happen. Alright, those were some of the changes and fixes that have been done in this release of OpenRC2. You can find the full change log in the link that I've left in the video description. Now, if you enjoyed this video or if it was useful for you, uh, please like this video. It would really help out my channel. Um, I would love to hear what you think of this release version in the comments. And if you want to stay updated on OpenRC2, uh, just subscribe to my channel. 
Alright, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in the next one. See you later.